morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I hope glad that some of you will say good morning to me, and uh, it is a good morning. Amen? Amen. So we've got a lot to be thankful to the Lord for, and we want to go uh, to the Lord for uh, in prayer that we might thank God for many things. We could see Brother Miss Simmons back, and uh, isn't it? Amen? Amen. And others that have been uh, sick, we just pray for them, and let's look to the Lord uh, this morning. Uh, for help, let's bow our heads. Father, we're grateful to you for your love and your care. We thank you that Brother uh, Brother Simmons, Brother Joe and Arlene are back with us today. We pray for uh, Brother Ms. Looney's uh, family, their dads, that you touch them today, have your hand upon them, and uh, we pray for Miss Percy that everything will go along with her and her, uh, her uh, surgeries. We pray, Father, for the nation of Ukraine today and for our country, how that we need to, uh, how we need to come back to God and how we pray, Father, for those that we help in the ministry, for the Charlins and the Tars. Dear Father, we, we pray for them. Have your hand upon us as we worship you today. And we'll be sure to give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And we'll sing our song. Amen. How great he is. Where I'm 
good looking bunch and you're singing real good, have a seat, please. Yeah. Do we have anybody that got older this week? On the roll. Or any anniversary. Anybody? Anybody have a birthday? Any young person or an adult that will come and let us sing happy birthday or happy anniversary to you? Anybody been married? How long does it feel like you've been married, Joe? Not very long. Not very long. Well, he's sitting right next to Miss Simmons. You know, you know he wouldn't have dared say that. You know, I, I understand that. You understand? It'll soon be 56 years. What? It will soon be 56 years. 56 years. It's been a long time to put up with that birdie, and no. has he been a pretty good boy? Every time I've always been down there, he's been he's been on his toes. He's really he's really acted real you know, real well. We're thankful for that. But no more come for him. I'm gonna let you sit on the first verse of number two hundred. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And then we'll stand up later.
you're opening your Bibles this morning, and I hope that you'll open them, uh, because it'll be good for you to uh, follow along in the scripture as I preach the message in Psalm, Psalm number 121, Psalm number 121 uh, this morning for our message for a few minutes on uh, the Psalm of Psalms is what I'm calling this, the Psalm of Psalms this morning for our uh, our message to you. It's good to see this big crowd on this uh, early time of the year, and we trust that this year will be a much greater year for us uh, than it was last year. Amen? Amen? Will you pray with me each and every day for the salvation of souls through our ministry here? Will you be a, a young person, a child, or an adult? And... Uh, we're going to mention one or two that we want you to call and to encourage to be here next Sunday that's not here today. But Psalm number 121, have you got that in your Bible? I'm going to read it through and then give you a few things on it this morning called the Psalm of Psalms. At least that's what I'm calling it. It's the song of what, uh, uh, if you have a, a Bible that gives some helps in it, uh, mine says the psalm of degrees, and it was perhaps a psalm that was chanted by the people of God as they went up to Jerusalem to the various feasts during uh, the time of worshiping the Lord in the days of, of David, in the days of, uh, of, uh, of the Old Testament. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which comes my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The Psalm of Psalms is what I'm going to call our message this morning. And if you listen good and, and close this morning, just 15 or 20 minutes, uh, we think of, uh, it says it's a song of degrees. And uh, the help in, that I have in my uh, Schofield Reference Bible, it says it was a, a a psalm that was chanted by the Israeli people as they went up to Jerusalem to the various feasts that they had during the, the year's time of worshiping the Lord. Now I want you to notice, beginning in verse 1 and 2, uh, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. To begin with, uh, at you as an individual, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not, whether you're saved or whether you're not, your help does not come from the devil. It does not come from the world. It comes from God. We're all dependent upon whether we're a child of God or whether we're not a child of God. We are totally, every one of us, dependent upon God and his mercy and his kindness. And aren't you glad that God gives us help in a time of need? That's basically what this verse 1 and 2, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. David, as he wrote this psalm, um, he, he said, uh, as he looks up unto the hills, what does he see? He sees the Lord. That's what he sees. He says, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and the earth. If there was not any other verse in all of the scripture that made that statement, this would be sufficient that God is the maker of the universe. Uh, we live in a world today that does not teach that. In our schools, they do not teach that. In our universities, in our world, they do not teach it. But I believe that God made the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it. Amen? Amen. You see, we as Christians are totally and uh, completely, totally dependent upon Almighty God. So all of our help, all of the, that which we have, the food and the clothing, the shelter, the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, everything that we have. I don't care what it is, whether it's a lot or, a, or very little. 
whether it's uh, good or sometimes whether it's kind of bad if, if we think it's bad. It all comes from God. We are totally, as people, we are dependent upon Almighty God. All help and all of our needs, every need that you have today, tomorrow, and forevermore can be met by God if we are let him. Sometimes we want some things that we don't need and we don't get them because if we did get them, we would be in trouble. Uh, you have, you can reminisce on the old, old one, go back and say, boy, I wanted that, this, that at that time, uh, but I didn't get it. And I can look back and see that I didn't get it because I didn't need it. And it was bad for me if I was, some of you young people, do we have, you know, we have some young people here uh, that, you know, girls are looking at boys and boys are looking at girls and first thing you know, they'll be married. Isn't that right, Cheryl? Not allowed. I, I will it's never allowed. forget the morning I married you. I didn't marry you. I married her to Andy now. <laughs> but, but uh, do you remember that? Did I ever tell about that? Many times. Many so. times. Well, I won't do it anymore. But any rest of you want to get married, I'm in the marrying business. In fact, the matter, there's a person that the last Sunday mentioned that to me, and they're not here this morning. And they, uh, I'm going to hold him to it. I'm going to knock him. I, I'm not. I better not. Uh, I better not say too many bad things this morning, because he might get me when he finds me. But nonetheless, uh, all of our help, every need that you have, it comes from God. You say, no, i got a check in the account at the bank. i got money in my pocket. But beloved, the check in the account is there because God put it there. The money in your pocket is there because God put it there. How many of us, and you don't need to hold in your hand, I, I, can, I, can, uh, I can literally remember some times when I didn't have a dollar in my pocket. When I didn't have a dollar in my pocket. You know, we live in a financially good times. But when I started out in the ministry many years ago, there was times that Bill and I, we did not have any money in our pocket. We didn't have anything edible in our in our kitchen. There were those times. But we live in time we live in good times today as far as that's concerned. Uh, we have less and less and less people call for help. I did have a have a person call me last week, and you might have already gotten a bill from it, uh, for it from James's. And uh, this lady wasn't bashful. She needed some groceries, and I was going to tell her to go ahead and get $100 worth at James's because, you know, if you get $50 worth, you can carry it out in your left hand. But nonetheless, she told me that she wanted $100 worth. <laughs> uh, she wasn't bashful. Uh, I don't remember her name, but uh, you'll get it on the... Uh, on the uh, thing from James, I guess, maybe. Uh, James, because they'll send us a bill for it. We don't expect him to do it. We expect to do it. We expect to help people. Amen? And all of our help, though, comes from God. Every need that we have, if, we, if, it's, if the need is met, it comes from God. Remember that. Now, some friend or relative might might be able to give you a hundred dollars or whatever the need is, but basically God enables that person to give you that money or that help. He enables that person to do that. So all of our help and all of our need comes from God. And then we have a great passage of scripture in verse three and four. He will not suffer the slumber. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that sleepeth, he will not slumber. You know what the word slumber means? We don't use it, but it's it means to doze off. Did you ever doze off? Now, if you do that at the wrong place, you're in trouble. Uh, but if you do, if you do that uh, uh, in the car or driving, you're in trouble, and or somebody else is in trouble. But uh, the psalmist uses the word slumber or doze or doze. Sometimes I look out and I see somebody slumbering in my audience, and uh, I don't get you, but that's my fault. I won't. Sometimes if I holler at you real loud, you better slumber or doze it off. And, uh, and so he, he says, uh, my help cometh from uh, the Lord from who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. 
he will not eat it. He that eateth thee will not doze long. He will not slumber. Did you know that uh, you can you can have your meat your need met just as much at midnight as you can at noon in the daytime? God is always there listening. And there's never a time in your life, whether you be a youth, a young person this morning, or an older adult, every time that you come to God for help in a time of need, He is there to help you. And He will answer. There's never a time, there's never a breath of air and a way of prayer that comes from your lips and your heart that by what God hears it. That doesn't mean that he answers your prayer exactly the way that you want it answered, but it does mean that he hears you because he's not dozing. He's not slumbering. He's listening. He's ever present. He, uh, my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not doze off. He'll always be there. And then in verse number four, look at that. He will not. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither sleep nor slumber or slumber nor sleep. It means that he's ever present. I think of for the scripture there's in the book of First Kings, chapter 17, Elijah was having a fight with Baal and his people. And I'm not going to go over because it would take a lot of time. But you know that the enemy, Baal's people, was fighting with uh, fighting with uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, Elijah. And Elijah was getting the best of them. And, and to just to talk about it, I don't, I don't quote it all together, but uh, Baal's people were losing and and, they, and Elijah said, well, well, call at him loud. Maybe he's, maybe he's taking a nap. Maybe he's, a, maybe he's asleep. Holler! And they, they hollered at their God. And, and, they, and they had a, from that first chapter of Kings, verse 17. You read it after a while when you go home. And, and so Elijah kind of made fun of them. Said, your God is not a listening. Your God is not your God is not there to help you in a time of need. Did you know there's never a time, be it at noonday or at midnight, in the morning or in the afternoon, there's never a time nor a need, whether it be a little need or a big need, that God will not hear and answer your prayer. Now, if if you're not going to do what he tells you to do, you might not get the right answer, but if he, you do what he tells you to do, then, beloved, you're going to hear from God. God has open ears, open ears, to hear everything that you and I have need for from time to time. In verse number 5 of our text this morning, he says, The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy, is thy shade upon thy right hand. All this really says that he's the eternal God. Did you know that we live in a time of change? Everything changes so very much. Uh, our lifestyle changes. My, my, in my life of almost soon be 90 years, but let me think that changed so much in life. People, you, you know, I'm old enough to remember how people live so different when I was a child. First place, they were very, most of the majority of them were very poor. A lot of them very poor. A lot of them didn't have jobs. A lot of them just, just totally depended upon each other. And then the Christian depended upon God. And we live in a time whenever uh, our God is ever present. He's the eternal God. You know, you can never, never have a need, be it just a little bitty need or a big need. I don't care what kind of a need you have, God will answer your need. One preacher told me one time that God answered uh, yes, no, or wait a while. And you know, I found that to be true. God always answers. It might take him a while, 
he might not be in the same rush that you're in. You know, when I want something, I want it right now. Amen? Isn't that the way it is? When you, when you sit down to the table, you expect your dear precious wife to have already uh, had the food ready for you to eat. You want it right now. You want it right now. But God is the eternal God, and he's not only the eternal God for those things, but look in verse number 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. And, of course, I'm not going to get into that moon by night. We know that the sun, and this is the way that the psalmist had of telling the people of Israel and us today uh, that nothing's going to smite us unless God permits us. It permits it to be uh, us to be smitten. Beloved, listen, if you're a child of God this morning, you have the greatest protector in all the world. If you own the cattle of a thousand hills and people to guard it, and if you had a gun on each pocket and a and rifles at home, beloved, listen, the best the best protector you have today is the Lord God. He's the one that takes care of us. Sometimes that we might think that God hasn't taken care of us. But do you know you never have a need? Whether it be a physical need, material need, a spiritual need, you never have a, any kind of a need in your life but what God knows about it. And if you need it bad enough and you ask him long enough, he will answer and give you that need that you think that you just must have. You know, sometimes we that are Christians, and we that are adults, we ask for things that we really shouldn't have. And if it wasn't for God's goodness, we'd have them, and they might bring us problems and troubles. And so the psalmist writes this great verse number six, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He's our protector. You don't, there's not a hair, in your head that moves, not a thought in your mind that makes a thought, nor nothing that you do in a day's time or a lifetime's time, but what God knows about it. Isn't it amazing how God shows? I tell you what, I can't hardly keep up with myself anymore, and you're the same way. But God knows everything and watches every every move that every one of us, and not just us, but all eternity. He knows our moves that we make. Oh, how I, I, I want to, I'm just sharing with you this morning, uh, the God of God. I called our passage the Psalm of Psalms, but our God is the God of God, and he cares. You never have a need, you never have a hurt, you never have a thought, you never have anything but what God's aware of your need. And I would that all of God's people, all of the people that, that are Christians that come to Aiken Baptist Church, that would learn to completely lean upon God. And then in our in our passage of verse number seven, it says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. In the first place, he preserves us by giving us salvation. I mentioned many years ago about the little word preserve. You know, we call, uh, uh, some, how many of you ladies put up preserve? Do any of you put up preserve? A few of you, I don't can, and most of us don't, do we? But we put up preserves, and they're preserved. They're preserved for our eating at a later date. And he says he preserves us. What does that mean? That means he keeps us. We're not turning off. We might get back to him. We might. You know, it, do you realize how far away that's possible for a Christian to get away from God? Think with me this morning, each one of you. Do you know of somebody, a, a son or a daughter, a mother, a father, a child, a relative, or a friend that strayed away from God? You know, if I was God and, and I was your God and you was to stray away from my instructions, you know what I'd do? Ooh, boy, I would wait till the sun come up till I'd be too good. I'd get my paddle out and my belt off 
I hope you do. But you know, we serve a long suffering God. I think of that a great deal as a pastor. How long suffering he is. I, I think of my own life, how long suffering he has been with me. There might be somebody here this morning, but you're not for sure that you're a Christian. You have never come to the place where you've asked the Lord to come into your heart and save you. And yet God continues to convict you about that and and he begins he continues to tell you about that. And yet he's so long suffering that he continues to do it and do it and do it. And I told you about my daddy's salvation. Uh, his wife, my mother, and us four boys that were that was uh, already born by that time during those days. We prayed for him often. And and I have prayed for people. I have prayed for people's salvation for years and years and years and years. I have a lady that uh, I keep up with. Uh, her husband died a few years ago. I knew her father-in-law and mother-in-law. I led them to Christ. And uh, I, I pray for her salvation every day. And I believe uh, if I will continue uh, to uh, come to God every day and pray for this precious lady's salvation, I'm dependent upon him to answer my prayer. I can't save this person. And the church can't save a person, but the only one has, that can save an individual is the Lord Jesus Christ. We preserve this. And then the last verse, the Lord shall preserve by going out, by coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. We, lay, we serve a God this morning that's everlasting. He's an eternal God. You know, I hate to be a person that would think that my God's going to leave me if I don't do such and such. As you well know, and I've preached so many times from this desk, that we believe that when a person has come and became a child of the Lord, that he's an eternal child of the Lord, and he will keep you, he saved you to begin with, and he will, he will keep you forever and forever. And did you know, you know, uh, you might have a child that has done wrong, and you sometimes would like to just, you know, disown them. You say, I don't care what you do in your mind and in prison, but they're always your child. They're always your, your son and your daughter. And beloved, we are an eternal children of God. We're not going to be children of God for a few years. We're going to be God, God's child forever. And why is that so important? In the first place, beloved, that means that when the call for us to go up, either in the rapture of the saints, or perhaps we, we live long enough to die and we go to the earth, but our spirit goes up to be with the Lord. To be absent from this body, Paul tells us, is to be present with the Lord. And so, you know, there's no fear of death in my heart because death has no power over me because I as a Christian, and you as a Christian, you belong to God. And I know that we often weep over that one that's passed away, and rightly so, if our heart is right. But beloved, if that person has gone to be with the Lord, my, we can rejoice. We can rejoice. And so the psalm of psalms teaches us that God is God. And there's none else beside him. And oftentimes in my prayer of the morning, I say, God, you're God, and you always will be. And to those that might be listening to me this morning, or to those that I might call this afternoon that's not here and you should be in God's house, I pray that you will have a burden upon your heart to love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and to diligently serve God. I want to tell you something as your pastor and your friend. There's nothing in the world 
so great of serving a loving God. May we stand with him. softly on the piano with our heads bowed and our eyes are closed and we are we are listening to the Holy Spirit and if you're a child of God and if you know of somebody that, that you know that's perhaps here or not here would you would you pray for them this morning that they've come to know Christ listen to me real gently as I say these two words, and I don't say them frivolously this morning, young man, young lady, or an adult man or woman, do you know that you're saved? Do you know that you're going to heaven? Because you know we don't know when our time is going to come. Would you, is there somebody here this morning uh, that you would just walk out from where you're at? And come up here and take my hand and I'll share with you I'll share with you how to be saved <coughs> I wondered this morning is there somebody that without Christ is there somebody here this morning would say pastor pray for me pray for me I want to, I want to know Christ as my Savior I wonder if there's someone young person if you just hold your hand up and say, Pastor, when you pray today or tonight or tomorrow, would you pray for my salvation? Is there somebody here this morning, be it a girl or a Somebody. You, you, you know, you don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow is, is it's a long way off. You don't have this afternoon for this time. I wonder if there's somebody here this morning, Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you just lift your hand up? Put it back now. And when I pray this afternoon, I'll lift your name. Anybody? Is there anybody? I preach the best I know how. I've given you the word of God. And I beg you for you to listen to the to the to the uh, words that I preach this morning and to the Spirit of God uh, that uh, teaches you and draws you to you. Is there somebody here? And say, Pastor, pray for me. And just put up your hand. Put it back now. I'll not embarrass you in any way. I'll not call your name except to God. And you'll say, Pastor, pray for me. Here. 